All right, this is the uh, Math 5, Chapter 2.1 test, taken February 7, 2020, versions B and K. Uh, question number one, find the remainder. Uh, I gave you a polynomial and then this clue right here. This tells you that f of x right above it. And then you can see that x is equal to negative 2. Then you're going to put in every x value, negative 2, with parentheses. And then don't forget to use uh, PEMDAS, parentheses and exponents first, before you multiply. So you're not going to do 8 times negative 2. What you are going to do is negative 2 to the 5th power, which is negative 32. Negative 2 to the 4th power times a gives you 128. Uh, negative 2 cubed gives you negative 8, and then negative 8 times 2 is negative 16 plus 4. And if you add all those together, you get 84. Your answer is choice C. Number question number 2 um, tells you to factor completely there. Um, remember, to use Xbox, you have a couple of conditions. You have to have, number 1, a trinomial, which means an A, B, and C value. So here you only have two, and then even if you did add a placeholder, the second condition is that you have to have half of the exponent. Half of three is 1.5, and you don't have that there. So therefore, you cannot use that. Um, therefore, if you have a binomial on your flowchart, and you can take the cube root of each of those, then you have, in this case, the difference of cubes. Difference means subtraction of cubes. Well, what is a cube root? And now, if you use your calculator, uh, mine's gonna look like this, math, and then go down to number four, and then you can type in a number such as 64. Remember that number there is 64, not negative 64, and you get four. So the cube root of y to the cube is y. Or another way of saying it is y to the third power is y cubed. 4 to the third power equals 64. Your a value is y, b value is uh, 4. The formula for the um, sum and difference of cubes is always going to be the same. a, b, a squared, a, b, and then b squared. And then the math operations start with what you have. So this one is a minus sign. So you're going to have soap, same, opposite, always positive. And then you just uh, substitute it in. And my a value is y. My b value is 4, not negative 4. a value is y. So y squared gives me y squared. a times b, 4 times y is 4y. <coughs> and then b is 4, so 4 squared is 16. This is your answer. That would be choice uh, A. Question number 3. Determine the uh, quotient. Um, the quotient is the answer. So I have... Um, I chose to use long division. And I have 3x minus 1. And the first thing I have to do is division. 3x goes into 6x to the 4th. And 6x to the 4th is... Um, let see if we can zoom in here. 6 is 3 times 2. x to the 4th is 4x's, 3x. And then I'm just canceling those out. You're left with a 2x to the 3rd. And that is why I put... 2x to the third up here. Then I'm going to multiply. 2x to the third times 3x gives you 6x to the fourth. This gives you negative 2x to the third. And then we need to subtract. Let's see if I can highlight that in my red pan like I did in class. <clears throat> and then I'm subtracting the coefficients. Uh, 6 minus 6 is 0. 1 minus negative 2 is 3. Bring this down to an 8. I'm going to divide 3x goes into 3x cubed. 3x cubed is 3x's with a 3, and dividing by 3x, so these cancel and you're left with x squared. x squared times 3x gives you 3x cubed. x squared times negative 1 is negative 1x squared. And then I subtract. 
8 minus negative 1 is a positive 9. Bring down the 9x. 3x goes to 9x squared. 3x times. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x times negative 1 is negative 3x. 9 minus 9. Let's highlight that again. 9 minus 9 is 0x squared. 9 minus a negative 3 is 12. That gives you 12x and a negative 4. 3x goes into 12x uh, 4 times. And then you put the 4 there, and then 4 times um, 3x is 12x. 4 times negative 4 is negative 4. And then 12 minus 12 is 0. Negative 4 minus negative 4 is also uh, 0. So your remainder is 0. And then my quotient is my answer. So all of this is my answer. Question number four. Uh, multiple choice, oh yeah, number four, multiple choice. Given two x plus five, write the zero that corresponds to each factor. This is a factor and common hint is a lot of times when you're factoring, the factor has parentheses around it. That's why I just drew that. To find the zero, you're going to set it equal to zero. Subtract five divided by two, x equals negative five halves. This is a positive five halves. That's wrong, wrong, wrong. So the answer is E. Question number three, you're going to just go the other way. X, given x equals negative four, so this is called a zero. This one was a, a factor. So in a zero, write the factor, get, it, get this to be a factor with those parentheses or um, get it equal to zero. So I have x equals negative 4, add 4, x plus 4 equals 0. That would be choice C. And question number, well, that was wrong. That should have been 5. Number 6, multiple choice, is x minus 5 a factor of this? Well, I'm using the remainder theorem. What does the remainder theorem say? Um, well, to determine if it's a factor, you can do that in three ways. You can use the factor theorem, and that just basically says um, if the remainder is equal to zero, then it's a factor. If the remainder is not equal to zero, then it's not a factor. That's essentially what the factor theorem is. To figure out the remainder, I can use the remainder theorem. I can use long division or synthetic division. I chose to use the remainder theorem, so x minus 5 equals 0. Add 5 to both sides, x equals 5. What do I do with that 5? I put in for every x value in parentheses as my substitution. 125, that becomes 9, which is 45, negative 5, and negative 5, and you get 60, 160. Um, if it was equal to 0 right here, then it would be a factor. So the answer is B, no, it's not a factor. Remember, quick graph is that's the power of 3. So starts down, ends up. Minus 5 is my y-intercept. And then if you go to 5, x equals 5, my y value is going to be 160. So the order pair is 5, 160. So the graph looks like that. If it was down here, if it touches or crosses this point, then that's when it would be a factor. But it doesn't. It's way up there. So it's not a factor. So six questions, two points of each. Those 12 points on the front side. All right, let's go on the back side now. Factor completely and then extra credit if you can factor over the complex. So it just tells me to factor. I need to make sure I show all your work in box or answers. I have four terms here. One, two, three, four. That should be a giveaway. Let's try factoring by grouping. <clears throat> and to remember, I found it super helpful to write them in the form of a Z here. So let's go ahead and do that. X cubed. Minus 2X squared plus 5X minus 10. And then I'm just going to take out the greatest common factor. So X squared, X, negative 2. 
and then five. And then I can double check my answer, right? Uh, x times x squared is x cubed. Negative two times x squared gives me negative two x squared. X times five is five x. Negative two times five is negative 10. So my answer is gonna be x minus two x squared plus five. Um, let's find a color, how about red? Okay, so this is called factoring over the real because um, all of these are real numbers. Now, if you wanted the extra credit, you would have to have done the x squared plus five. So x squared plus five equals zero. And fact, a complex just basically means you need one i in there. You could use a quadratic formula, a lot of work x squared plus 0x plus 5 equals 0, and those are a, b, and c, and put it into the quadratic formula. Or you should just recognize this is a square root problem, so subtract 5, x squared equals negative 5. We're going to take the square root here, x equals, pay attention, you need both a plus and a minus, um, the square root of negative 5. And then the factors of negative five are the square root of negative one times the square root of five. This one uh, becomes plus or minus i, and then square root of five you cannot simplify. So your answer is x equals plus or minus i radical five. There's a couple of reasons why this works. Let me show you guys the answer. So I'm just gonna take x minus two. And then remember you have x minus x minus, and then you'll have one of these to be um, positive i radical 5, and then you do the negative i radical 5, and then to clean that up, your answer would just be um, x minus 2, x minus i radical 5, and x plus i radical 5, and this would be factored over the complex. And this makes sense because the fundamental theorem of algebra tells us the number of zeros based on the exponent. So this is a power of three. One, two, three. Now, this tells you there's one real and then there's actually two imaginaries. How do I know that? Because if you uh, solved over the complex, this is one real and this is an imaginary and this is an imaginary. So one, two, three zeros. So if you wanted the extra point, then you would have to have had this as your answer. Question number eight. Solve x squared plus six x plus 18 using the quadratic formula. Now I gave you a hint. I could have just said solve and then, but it's telling you just use a quadratic formula. Now to use a quadratic formula, you just have to know it and write it down. And you guys could have just obviously wrote that down from your formula sheet. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root, long square root, B squared minus 4AC. All over long division bar, 2 times A. Okay, my A value is 1. B value is 6, C is 18. So now I'm going to do my substitutions. B value is 6. Notice how I'm doing my substitution in parentheses there. And then 6 squared minus 4 times my A value is 1. C value is 18. All over 2 times 1. <coughs> so first step, write down the formula, quadratic formula. Second step, substitute, and then lots of simplifying. Negative six. Six squared is 36. Negative four times one times 18. Uh, it's gonna be negative 72. All over two. Negative six. 
plus or minus 36 minus 72, put that in your calculator, negative 36, all over 2. And then I'm going to write down the factors of 30, uh, negative 36, which is going to be negative 1 and 36, all over 2. Negative 6 plus or minus, okay, square root of negative 1, we've seen this throughout the, is i. Square root of negative 1 is i. And then the square root of 36 is 6. <coughs> now, remember, a common mistake is after you take the square root, the square root sign is gone. And then to simplify that, most students, if you get stuck there, might be like 3.75 there, is I'm going to factor out a 2 because they're all evens. So just think opposite by distributing, right? 2 times something equals negative 6, that's negative 3. 2 times something, that would be 3i over 2. And then your 2s would cancel. And then you're left with x equals negative 3 plus or minus 3i is your answer. Question number nine, given x to the fourth minus x squared minus 12, factor completely. So I have a trinomial. <clears throat> One, two, three, that's an A, B, and C. And if I can take half the exponent, let's see if we can take half the leading exponent, x to the fourth, so the fourth, half of four is two. This is good when both these conditions work, you can use Xbox. So let's do Xbox. Um, your A, B, and C, your A value is one. So A times C, and one times negative 12 is gonna be negative 12. And then my B value is gonna be negative one. Two numbers that multiply to be negative, or 12 is four and three, and they need to add to be negative one. So this one's gonna be there, negative. Negative four times three is negative 12. Add those together, you get negative one. Now let's say you don't know the shortcut. Just take those two values. They will always go there. Remember they're splitting the uh, middle term. <coughs> So the first term will always go into the top left. The yellow here, negative four and three, are splitting negative one. So you have to add an x squared, x squared, and the last term minus 12. Just take out your greatest common factor, x squared, x squared, minus four, and then plus three. And then double check by multiplying and that works. So to factor completely, I have x squared minus 4 and x squared plus 3. But <coughs> here, if you would recognize, you have to factor that one again. And that's why I drew a kind of a big space right there. If you had put a 0x here, you would have gone a times c is negative four, your b value is zero, and your two numbers are two and negative two. So to factor the red, it would be x plus two, x minus two. And then this one would just be x squared plus three. What was the shortcut I was talking about before? Um, remember, when you're doing this Xbox method, you only have to do the x when a is equal to 1. If this number is greater than 1, you have to do both x and the box. 
So to summarize, a is equal to one, just use the x, and if a is greater than one, you have to use the x box. But if you forget and don't know that shortcut, you can actually do both and get the same answer. All right, second step is now find the zeros. How do I find the zeros? Well, these are called factors. I don't know, an obvious way to kind of explain that is they have parentheses. To find or identify the zeros or solve, for the zeros are just solving, I'm going to set each of these equal to zero. And then you just basically uh, solve each one of these. Subtract two, x equals negative two. Add two, x equals two. Subtract three, x squared equals negative three. How do you get rid of the um, power of 2 there, you have to take the square root. We talked about previously, if you take the square root of an equation, it's plus or minus. And then you have the square root of negative 3. And the factors are negative 1 and 3. The square root of negative 1 is i. So there, this zero is x equals plus or minus i radical three. Again, the reason why you have to write that plus or minus is because now if you take one of these, something like i radical three squared, um, i squared is negative one and negative one um, uh, that becomes the uh, square root uh, that becomes the uh, i radical 3 squared would just be i radical 3 times i radical 3, which is i squared times 3, which is negative 1 times 3, which is negative 3. So that proves to you, not in the red, but if you put in positive i radical 3 or negative i radical 3, it'll equal negative 3. So there's two answers that you can put in for x squared will give you negative three. Okay, sketch the graph. Sketch it. Use my straight edge. I'm gonna write the original problem down here just so you can see it x to the fourth minus x squared minus 12. All right, so negative 12 is my y-intercept. Let's try negative 12. And it's to the power of four, so it's an even degree, like a quadratic, starts up, ends up. The coefficient is positive, so your arrows stay that way. And then I'm going to take x equals negative 2. Let's see what colors I got. And then x equals 2. <clears throat> okay, now remember this is on the x and y coordinate, so these this is the real number system. So there is no i in radical 3 on the complex, so you can just go ahead and sketch it. Now I should show some kind of turning point or extrema to there. Why is that the case? Remember the degree 4 is equal to the extrema minus um, Extrema equals degree minus one. We learned that previously. Extrema equals degree minus one. So if I have one, two, three extrema, and you add one here, you get a fourth degree polynomial. So that basically is telling us in a fourth degree polynomial, you have to have one less for the extrema. So if I just went here and did a quadratic, uh, I wouldn't have enough extrema. And then that's how you graph your, looks something like this. Doesn't have to look exactly, but it's a W. 
and you should have three turning points. And then for the extra credit question, um, what is the main, for period two was, uh, who is the main rival that we have? Period two, the answer is Magnolia. Period three, I said the first day introduction video, what do I like? Um, there's four things you could have put one of the four uptick as extra credit, Boba, Coke, Michael Jordan, or Port Marius. And period four was my first job in high school. The answer was library or Jamba Juice. Math. Say it again. I love math.